Hey, this is future editor Ethan. This video is the assembly manual for the Albuquerque box camera. It goes on for maybe an hour and has every single step you need to build one and build all the tanks. And um, If you are actually just looking for an overview video on this, check out the In an Instant video that I did for my artist residency with Camera Dactyl, direct positive prints or wet Polaroids with the Albuquerque box camera. Anyway, this video will be pretty dry and straightforward. Um, I suggest that you watch along, watch through once and then watch along and pause as you build yours step by step. All right. Oh, big thanks to Joe Van Cleve and Grace Abler for videotaping a lot of this. Um, okay, have fun. Here we go. Okay, we're recording. All right, so uh, today we're gonna make the assembly manual for the Albuquerque box camera. It's uh, Joe, my take on the uh, Afghan box camera. Um, we're gonna do it in three sections. One, constructing the main body. Uh, two, constructing what will eventually be this uh, negative carrier. Oops. And then uh, three, we're gonna make uh, some developing tanks and an acrylic paper safe. The things you're going to need for this project, a ton of wood glue, a bunch of uh, regular piano hinges, some 3 8 by 16 by inch and a quarter bolts, some of these 3D printed parts, I guess those will come with it. Um, these are 300 millimeter uh, by 8 millimeter diameter uh, 3D printer rails. We've got four of these 20 millimeter linear bearings. Uh, and then a whole bunch of M3 by 16 screws. I use a little bit of crazy glue cyanoacrylate and uh, having clamps is not totally necessary but makes it much easier. We're going to use a whole lot of tape as well to hold things in place. And then for doing the acrylic work I use Weld On 3 acrylic cement. This is a solvent that melts acrylic to acrylic to make two pieces into one piece rather than just gluing them together. To apply them, I use one of these plastic squeeze bottles. I think they're sold as plasticators. They have these lure lock needles. These needles will gum up, so uh, I suggest buying, you know, a hundred pack for a couple of bucks of these uh, 26 or 28 gauge uh, lure lock blunt dispensing tips. And then, of course, some uh, gloves. So we're going to use some Danish oil and sandpaper. All right, let's get started. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the main parts of the box. I'm going to lay them out as um, different sides as if I had expanded them like uh, rolling out a cardboard box. Let's start with the top of the camera and the bottom of the camera. These are the um, embedded nuts for the tripod hole and the strap. We'll see those later. And then uh, this guy goes here and these guys go there. Uh, this is the right side of the camera. Um, on most cameras this will be uh, the same right and left side, but uh, on this camera I made a big porthole for a demo version. and We'll see if it's a little different. All right, so on the right side of the camera. And then we've got the front of the camera. Let's take a look at this. And then we've got, for this guy, just in logical order, this is the lens board for carrying with no lens on it. This is the lens board that uh, actually holds the lens. Here is one of the locks. Um, these guys go on the inside, so actually this lock would go underneath. These guys go in here and hold the focusing rails uh, and perform uh, light sealing duty against the uh, lens board. Then let's go to, this is the porthole side. This would just be a flat piece on a normal camera, normal Albuquerque box camera. And then this is the uh, inner flange and the locking tabs. And then the porthole seal looks something like that. The locking tabs, of course, go on the other side. And then let's take a look at the back of the camera start off with this guy, um, again this is the inside, this is the outside, uh, this guy goes on the outside, <laughs> can I remember, okay, outside, outside, inside, uh, inside, the 
this is the door here, and then there's the door inside the door for focusing. They go on that side, I see. The locks for the big door, and then the lock for the small door is there. Okay, so those are the main parts of the uh, body of the camera. Inside we're going to put some uh, light seals eventually, um, in case there's any gaps in the woodwork. And we're going to paint it black, we're going to install some parts in this focusing screen, and then we'll also put in um, a tray holding tray rack thing, but we'll get to that uh, after this main part. I'm going to start by building the main box, trying to clamp it or tape it in place and letting it dry. Uh, here we go. So this is again the right side of the camera. Um, I'm going to do this kind of quick today. Not the best woodworking, it's going to be the best camera, but if you do this at home it would behoove you not to try and film it all in a day, but glue and clamp and glue and clamp and let it rest for 24 hours and you know take a weekend and build a beautiful one and use it for the next 35 years um let's do the bottom two Man, if Joe would stop filming and lend me a hand here, I could do it. No, I got laser cutter. Sometimes you don't need all the woodworking tools to get a perfect fit. The next thing I'm going to do is put in some of these light seals in the corners before we put on this top. These are the long ones. There's these medium ones. These medium ones, they are different and the short guys go in here facing the wall. It's important because they all kind of fit in together. Uh, boop. Boop. Okay. And then these long guys go on the top and the gap in between them is going to get this guy. And this is going to be the lip that holds the rack that holds the tanks. A little glue fillet in here on the bottom and so. these in first, huh? Goes in here. Grab woodworking tools. Sometimes they are not. This is the light seal for our porthole. Okay, so I can tell I need a glue fillet around here. And then, boy, that's going to be difficult to get glue in there without getting it everywhere, but okay. It's the 
portion just under the uh, box joint, the crenellation. This guy in. This is the porthole for the demo camera. The regular camera. Not have this. Okay. Check at least visually that the holes are through, and if they're not, poke the glue out before it dries. Okay, well. All right. So because I uh, was trying to do all of this quickly on one tiny table. I got glue everywhere. Uh, if you were doing this, you should just do one step and then let it dry. <laughs> Take a weekend and uh, don't deal with this. Anyway, I'm getting all of this schmutz off. Do an ad for plastic razor blades. Great for all sorts of projects. <laughs> Is the fascia for that. Spread some glue. Boom. I'm just going to stick these screws in, make sure that they're clear, so that's aligned when I press it all together. All right, while that's drying, we can put in the light seals here, here, and up against the portal. You think Bob Vila ever had a half-empty bottle of Tight Bond 3? Oh yeah. Nah. A lot of B-roll cut from that. Mm -hmm. At this point, we're going to let this thing dry and come back to it. Uh, when it's a little bit more sturdy, maybe I'll give it a wipe off off camera. We're going to put in um, the tripod nuts and the wooden pieces that mate to them. We're going to use a bolt and it's going to go through here. Uh, this is actually for the strap. And then I'm going to just both sides of this thing, and that one goes like that. So over this nut, and we do the same deal down here. It'll be a little easier to see. These are uh, three eighths by sixteen uh, standard, like large format tripod threads. Some medium format tripod threads too. Is that like surveyors, tripods? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, or you know, four by five cameras. Okay. So the next thing we're going to put in is the light seal uh, for the um, lens board and the mount for the focusing rails. When we do that, we've got these little holes here. We want to make sure that those are lined up with these holes and those are um, for the sliding locks for the lens board. So, okay. M3 screw through here in diagonal corners and 
and we get one more screw to align this guy, this guy in place. I'm going to put this to the side and we're going to assemble the back door. And now we're going to put the outer part of the back door together. Um, it's important that the uh, locking tabs go on the left side and that the holes for this uh, locking tab for the little door go on this side. So it looks like this. Uh, left side, these tabs, and then on the back, we've got these two holes here that align with these holes. And we're going to use those holes and these holes to align the whole thing after we glue it up. Okay. That goes on there. I'm going to use some of these gummy old screws to align it and I will clamp it down nice and flat. The little focusing door that goes on the back and this guy goes like that on the outside. Where this look better. Yeah, that's a nicer cut. And then it's a nice one on the inside. This is going to be aligned like this, but I also am going to use this door to align it. Get this guy through. Just pop it like that. Oh, yeah. This is the uh, side portal going together. This is the inner piece or light seal. This is the outer piece. Um, we gotta glue them together. There's no alignment holes or anything on this one. Alright, now, get my clamps ready. And that is the side portal. So these are the pieces um, to put together the stage or negative carrier. This is what we're eventually going to make. Um, this guy rotates for vertical or horizontal use. Uh, it's got a piece of ground glass, a magnetic tape hinge. Um, and then it's got these bearing blocks that sit on the rail. So the first thing we're going to do is put these two identical layers together. They're going to sit um, at the center of this. Screws and nuts and put it together in alignment. And we're going to let that dry. It's just the um, little thumb button for the lock on the rotating back. A very fragile piece. Goes on there. Just like that. You give your finger a little bit more of a catch in the dark. The next step you can glue or just screw. I'm going to just screw, uh, but you can make your choice. We're going to assemble the bearing block onto the top of this guy. So the bearing block is composed of two types of blocks. These blocks with the big holes and these blocks with the little holes. There are two little hole blocks and those are the end caps. The little hole blocks allow the 8mm rod to slide through, but they do not allow the bearing to go through which sits in these holes. Right, two big holes and a small hole. And then on the, on the bottom there should be four big holes and one small hole. 
like this, in each of these holes we should have two uh, linear bearings here. <laughs> This guy. I'm going to take some wood screws and drive them in. A couple from this side, a couple from the other side. You can again glue this, but you do not need to. Okay, so now we have the uh, sliding frame, which we will assemble something else inside this guy. Inside the camera, uh, this rail has this locking. Uh, mounting points on the left bottom. So this faces towards you, this faces towards the subject. There are a number of plates, and here is the logic how to sort them out because I haven't uh, memorized. Okay, the outer locking plate has these two uh, notches here where the lock will come in and interact. So that plate goes on the outside. Notice it's also bigger than this circle, so it can't go through, but it can rotate. Then you have two plates, I believe they are identical, they are, and they sit in the center here, and they can rotate. And we're going to sand these before we put them together and actually use a crayon to uh, lubricate them. And then the last plate has no notches whatsoever, and that goes on the back like this. Um, before we put this together, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding, and I'm going to go grab a crayon. So, uh, inside this rotating surface, it helps to give it a quick sand. Again, if you're doing this at home, glue this on day one. On day two, 24 hours later, then do your sanding. But I'm making one quick for YouTube. I don't got Joe's time all week. He's got places to be. <laughs> Come on! Um, all right, so now I'm going to use this crayon to just get some wax in there. It will last a lifetime of waxing. Excuse me, sir, does it have to be yellow? Uh, no, white is my general wood wax of choice, but again, this is going to be in the dark. It doesn't matter. Uh, and Should it be red? Yeah, it could be red so for safety, right? Under the, you know, to, as so as not to expose. You just shouldn't use glow in the dark crayons, probably. But I mean, this is going to be in a light, tight area. I'll put some around. A little, little bit of lipstick on this pig. Around there. The advantage of using a colored crayon is you can see exactly where you have lubricated and where you have not. Lubri crayon. Yeah, I really uh, enjoy waxed woods. I think they move nice. Okay. Waxwoods.com. Oh yeah, the short stack facing towards you these guys together, uh, this guy in the back with the nicer face facing forward, like this, and then this guy in the front again with the nicer face facing forward. Then you get your 25 millimeter M3 button head cap screws. You stick them babies in. Let's see, the first one's always 
I am going to build this today with regular nuts. These are M3 uh, hex nuts. I would suggest if you are building one at home, you build them with nylock nuts, and you will only have to put it together once, but I'm going to take this apart uh, quite a few times as a different type of demo. What are you doing? Nothing. These are the components for the focusing screen. You've got two little thumb tab pieces and the focusing screen itself. I'm going to start by peeling it. You want to be kind of careful not to get your fingers on it, especially on the ground side. It's annoying to clean. So this is the ground side. It's the side that's going to go towards the film gate. Um, I'm going to leave it up. That's the side that's harder to clean. Peel these guys. Two. You've also got these 10 millimeter by two and a half millimeter magnets. We're going to use two of them for the closure. And I've got Weld On 3, uh, which is an acrylic solvent in a little plasticator bottle. It's a squeeze bottle with a standard lure lock needle tip like from um you know like one of them <laughs> one of them syringes man uh, i use gloves when i am using it and i try not to spill it on myself it's a very ooh, volatile solvent but it's pretty cool one side is that side shiny side is this side faces the front of the camera and the tabs are on the back so the first one i'm just going to align and just give a little drop you see it's through capillary action, just sucked up and aligned, and I will press it and just feel the edge to make sure we're aligned. It's not super important or critical, but uh, it is nice to have a nice aligned thumb tab in there. Take a little extra pride in that. Um, so it gets a little gummy as the solvent flashes off. You want to just keep it in alignment and then press it together. And then... It's kind of good. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry a couple of minutes and then we will mount a magnet in here. In the meantime... Uh, we can put one of the magnets into this hole. Can we fit two of them? Oh, yeah. Super strong magnet closure. Uh -oh. um, okay, so I attach the magnets with cyanoacrylate, just crazy glue. Super glue by another name. Do one magnet. Oops. Two. Magnets. Uh, uh, uh. What? Two magnets. Uh, 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 uh. Three magnets. Uh, uh, uh. And four magnets is flush. Just get a little glue in there, make sure it's not going anywhere. And then when we put the magnet in the acrylic screen, we're going to make sure that the polarity is such that it's attracted and not repulsed by the magnet I just added. But these are the removable tabs to uh, put a shoulder strap on the camera. Uh, each of them have three pieces. So I suggest you find the two nicest faces. I like these two. Those will be outside. I guess the four nicest faces. Um, I like these two. All right, and these are pretty simple assembly. You just put some glue on there, man. Rub it all around. Okay. 
We're going to do the magnet to the focusing screen. And this guy's going to magnet close like that. So I'm going to find one magnet and make sure it's the right polarity. It's pulling that way. And then that's going to go in here like that. But first, there's a drop. No crazy glue. You don't want to use too much or get this on the screen. It will uh, craze and off gas and turn it white. So, okay. Bloop. All right. And then here's the pro tip. Um, let this magnet dry somewhere very far away from other metals or magnets. Certainly this magnet, because they will either pull each other together and then uh, be stuck there permanently with glue or pull each other out. So one can dry over there and one can dry over here. So before we assemble all of the mechanical components and finish it, we're going to quickly spray the inside uh, black. We're going to spray it with uh, black satin and then I've got some of this refrigerator paint or Plasti Dip works. It's like a little bit uh, smoother, uh, more durable paint for the lower half of the camera and the chemical tray so that you can wipe it off clean. Um, if you're making this at home, this also might be a good time to sand and finish all of the parts. Today, for uh, purposes of assembly and getting this video done, I'm going to assemble the whole thing and uh, sand and finish it later. Um, okay, so um, I suggest you do a really good job masking all of this stuff when you build one. Now here's the uh, kind of tricky one, but okay. How's that thing? It's good. Real good job. Now I'm going to use some refrigerator paint on the bottom and a chemical tray. Another beautiful paint job. <laughs> All right, go. All right, let's see how much paint I got on the underside. Ooh. Also not painted. Good job, Ethan. I did such a good job at masking all of these parts. Yeah, look at that. Good job, Ethan. Oh, well, thanks. This one's got to dry and get painted. So on you the advise side. that masking is for sissies? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, everybody should mask. Everybody should wait 24 hours between glue joints. But uh, you know, we got a day to build this thing and make a video and all that magic. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about cameras. <laughs> I'm going to give it a quick sand, uh, 120, then 200, then I'll give it a quick sand with 600 grit sandpaper, and uh, yeah. So I'm going to make a gaffer's tape hinge for this guy. Now that the magnet's in place, it will auto-align itself. Make you open this up. The gaffer's tape is cloth tape with rubber adhesive. Yep. yep. Not duct tape. That'll break down much quicker. Good gaffer's tape will last you a very long time. Okay. 
Okay, now we're going to put in the lock. This guy goes on there. Just like that. Again, I recommend using nylock nuts here, but I'm just using regular M3 nuts so that I can take it apart for an assembly demo later. Covered in glue, but we're going to just roll with it. Okay, so you want those to be snug, but not so snug that you can't slide this in and out. In either position. So this piece is done. This is the um, let me say uh, focusing stage, focusing negative carrier, negative carrier. So the negative carrier is done. I wound up enjoying uh, just a bunch of stack of nuts on this thing. Now we got this guy. I am using uh, two inch by inch and three eighths brass hinges. I got these at Lowe's. Uh, you can use piano hinges. You can use all sorts of hinges. Um, that is up to you and part of your customization of your camera. But if you want mine, they're like, you know, a couple of bucks at Lowe's. Anyway, uh, you want this guy to be able to swing in and out. So kind of center him here, center this guy there. Okay, we got the door. There's a lot of these sliding locks. Uh, the smallest is for the small door. They work like that. These are 20 millimeter M3 screws and I'm tightening them not super tight because I want the slide to slide so it can lock and unlock uh, but not so loose that it can wobble. So the slide comes up, this guy closes, the slide comes down, this door is locked. We're going to use these larger versions of it over here for opening the main door. On this side I'm going to use again three two by inch and three eighths brass hinges. Again you can use whatever hinges you want that fit. Maybe piano hinges would be beautiful. It's up to you. The hinges are going to go on this side, one, two, three, something like that, and the locks are going to go on this side. Again, regular nuts, you should use nylock nuts so they don't walk out. The only reason to put regular nuts in is because you want to disassemble it to show people how it goes together multiple times. <laughs>
This is the demo version of the camera with a portal on the side. We made this piece and it fits nicely in here with a light seal. You've got these locks, they're the same locks that hold the lens board on. And 20 millimeter M3 screws and you should use nylock nuts. I'm gonna use regular Degler nuts. There she is. What do you feel? Pretty good. I mean, I've been dreaming about this hole in this camera for years now. Ever since the first time I tried to do a demo and, well, you can't really see what I'm doing. These are all M3 by 25 millimeter long machine screws, button head cap screws. You can even put it on the correct way. This one is nice and stained. Ooh. I'm pretty excited about it. Oh yeah. Later I'll take this out to sand and stain it. I'll take this off to do so. You should sand and stain yours. Um, or paint it black or some crazy colors. Uh, black is probably the most useful. Okay, so this guy goes in here. The rail goes in through the back. Into a pocket. Let me get it in the pocket. Okay. So I don't know if you can see in there. I need to uh, just open up my aperture a little bit. Let's see. Oops. So there's a pocket right here and right here. And I'm going to slide the second guy into the pocket, so maybe you can see it going. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know my hand is in the way, but I'm mm -hmm. feeling to get it aligned, and then I will remove my hand. Okay, so my hand's removed next here. We'll see this in the demo. This is locked in the horizontal position. Uh, this is locked in the vertical position. Open, close. For a focusing marker, I use one of these nice bulldog clips. So I want to focus back up there. Put it back together. Maybe. Okay, now that the camera is built, I am going to uh, use Danish oil to finish it. Uh, you can use whatever you like. I like Danish oil. I like the light stuff on this light plywood. Okay. Paint would hide uh, imperfections better, but I still like this uh, thing. All right, so I'm oiling all the little pieces. Put a lot of oil on, and then I let it sit for a little bit, and then I wipe it all off. And repeat, probably repeat again in a few days. And the oil will darken and become beautiful over time. More like this is the same wood and the same finish, but after a couple of years of weathering. <laughs> Okay. 
I'm going to make an arm sleeve for the Afghan box camera. I'm using this uh, two-sided material. It's kind of what they make those old people windshade, uh, wind windshield reflectors out of and uh, pop-up dark room tents. The piece you need is uh, 25 inches by 57 or like the width that it comes in. Um, first start by cutting that, then we're going to fold it in half. Um, this is going to be the end of the sleeve towards our elbow when it's rolled up and uh, this is going to be the part that goes inside of this flange that we painted black when we painted the camera and gets bolted to uh, this part right here. First step is rolling this guy. Um, actually, you know what? First step is uh, sewing this edge. I'm not going to sew. I am going to do something much more fun, which is use some nice duct tape. Gaffer's tape, actually. Man, I'm so good at sewing. All right, then I'm going to take this guy and um, what am I going to do? I guess I could do it two ways. Let's do it the fancy way. I'm going to take this guy and stick it uh, inside the pocket like this. Feed it in kind of like a, a snake. All right, so around the elbow side, I'm just going to put one little piece of tape to hold it in place temporarily while I size the flange side. Like that. and that's roughly, you know, big enough to go around my bicep or whole arm uh, easily, but not too loose. Okay. The other side has to be a much more specific size uh, to fit the flange at the camera body. So, get this kind of tucked in and I want to slip it inside this flange and then expand it until it's kind of touching all sides of the flange from the inside. Um, I want this to be Oh, maybe three inches of extra material sticking through the flange that we're going to peel out and bolt to the inside of the camera. So you want to expand the last three or four inches of this, um, of this sleeve to meet the inside of the uh, flange here. Then you just want to make sure that all of this is taped. The outside first. And then on the inside. Turn this guy inside out for a quick second. Again, I'm going to stick this through. 
open up the last. All right, so I'm gonna stick this through again, open up the last uh, three or four inches to match the inside of the flange, and then I'm gonna take the inside. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna flip it out again, right side out. All right, I'm gonna grab the camera and we're gonna wind up mounting this flange inside. Let's see if I can do it so you can see. Inside here with the um, excess of the end of the sleeve coming out and then we'll trim that down. Give it some slices so it can open up just at the very end. So we're gonna use some M3 by 20 millimeter bolts. Stick them in from the outside. Try and pinch this bolt in here and just drive it through the fabric. The first one is the hardest with my electric screwdriver. There we go. And then I'm gonna use an M3 nylock nut. These are great because they won't walk off. They're a little slower to put on because you gotta grab them with the pliers. Boom. Okay, now that the first one's in, the rest should be a little easier. Now that that's in there nice and tight, I'm just going to trim off the excess. Okay, there you have it. The uh, arm sleeve for the camera. It's nice and long. I'm going to stick my hand in. Uh, definitely no lights going to get in. You can make one in a number of different ways. You can even sew them together. Um, it's replaceable with that flange that I just put in. Let's go take some pictures. Maybe. Let's do... What else do we have to do on this camera? Alright, the last little bit of this is taking two... 3 8 by 16 bolts and sticking them in these doohickeys. Uh, they may just press in a little bit, but they'll really only press in about that tight and we'll fix that. Or they may need a little bit of reaming out at the edge of the knife, like that. Then again we can press this guy in uh, only so far. I was stronger when I was fatter. <laughs> okay, so uh, then we have this tool called a 3 8 by 16 nut. This uh, wrench to grab the nut and a channel locks to gently grab the knob. Boop. And then we're just going to tighten and it'll suck the 
bolt right down into the knob in a way that it will never ever separate. These knobs for 3 8 by 16 bolts are something that I use on a lot of my designs. I can print 3 8 by 16 threads on a standard Ender 3, one of these printers behind me. And uh, yeah, they're just really <laughs> good knobs. These are a couple of bucks a piece if you were to buy them on Amazon and it's hard to get the right size and length. So um, these are about a perfect use for 3D prints. Then we've got a pair of these knobs and these are going to hold the strap lugs on. These are the strap lugs. Let's make a strap. To install the strap lugs on the camera, which I suggest you do before cutting your strap to length, Put this guy on, and then facing towards the camera. All right. I like to carry this guy folded up and pushed into here. And we've got our webbing. How does this go? Um, in the bottom from the outside. Then up and back through the top hole and out. Just like that. Use whatever type of webbing you like. I like this seat belt webbing. Use a lighter to just singe the end so it doesn't fray where I cut it. This side has been fraying since I probably cut the last strap off of it. Or maybe that was the factory end. Warehouse end. Now you have the most fashionable accessory for New York Fashion Week 2024. Wooden briefcases should make a comeback, maybe. Now I'm going to show you how to make one of these vertical slot tanks for the Albuquerque box camera. This is it finished. This is it finished with um, the protective paper still on, and these are the pieces. So, uh, the tank should be laid out like this. There are two sides, they're identical, and then there are two longer pieces. Those are the bottom of the tank. One is slightly larger on all sides than the other, that goes on the bottom. And then there are four more pieces that are all about the same size, but um, these guys are bigger and these guys are just slightly smaller. So the bigger ones are going to go on the outside and the smaller ones are going to go on the inside. Now I only want to peel um, the surfaces that get bonded and leave these last outer surfaces still covered just so I can get a nice shiny acrylic tank like this. So. I'm going to start by peeling the short, smaller ones inside and out. These are internal parts. Um, a lot of these walls are double walled because that's a good mechanical way to keep out light, even if the bonding isn't perfect, although the bonding should be perfect because it is supposed to be watertight, and so far all of them have been. We will test. All right, this is the inner piece on the bottom. I'm going to peel it both sides. Then I'm going to peel the inside of the front and back of the tank. Then I'm going to peel the inside of the bottom, but leave the bottom still covered, and then the inside of the outer walls here and here. I'm going to tape the box together. Uh, it's important to figure out whether the pieces go like this or like this correctly because 
they need to go um, together correctly for everything to fit perfectly and be watertight. So the side part sits on top of the bottom piece like, like that. This is the bottom, this is the side. That's exaggerated. I'm going to put it together perfectly aligned. Come on. Easier to not do it in front of the camera. Okay. And then I'm going to do the other side piece. Okay. And this bottom piece goes inside like that. So, let's see. I'm going to put a piece of tape on either side of the base. And then bring this guy over. It should fit around just like a frame. Then we have the inner side walls and then the inner bottom. They go in like that. They just are held in there. Uh, the side walls are outside of the bottom piece. If we can focus on that. And then the face of the tank goes on and should sit flush with everything, which it do. And I'm just going to add some tape to the corners. So now is a good time to put on some gloves. I'm using acrylic cement. It's um, a solvent that melts the acrylic to itself rather than gluing it uh, and it makes a watertight seal. I use a 20, is this 25 gauge lure lock uh, blunt dispensing tip on one of these bottles. It's like a squeeze bottle. Um, I think they call them a plasticator. <laughs> this is like a super fluid, highly volatile, um, goes through your skin type of solvent. And so basically you just hold everything in contact and use a very little bit and through extreme capillary action it is sucked into the joints where your parts are touching. And so you just kind of let it get into the corners and there you go. Squeeze it together. Squirt some in there on the corners again and squeeze it together. All right, that should be good enough to tack it and then I like to flow some of this solvent along the edge of every inner corner to make sure that any space where water could get through has melted together. You can make it flow down the edge of a corner like that Make sure they get it nice and covered. Pour it in, pour it out. Give it another squeeze. And already it feels very solid. So let's take a look. You probably want to give this uh, 10 or 20 minutes to dry completely before you peel it. I will peel gently. It's a very easy process to glue. It's just a little bit hazardous. You've got to treat the solvent with some care, use some ventilation, and uh, you only really get one shot. If you bond it wrong, you gotta start again. But there you go. Now peel the protective cover and we should have a nice shiny acrylic tank. Go. Weak free. The way to be. And that is how you build a fish tank. 
is the part of the video where we're going to make the paper safe for the Afghan box camera or the Albuquerque box camera. Um, it's light tight so you can keep paper in here inside of your camera even when you open it up too light. So we're going to make it out of these acrylic pieces. Um, it's got a uh, gaffer's tape hinge on the inside and outside and uh, a magnetic closure. So we'll see that. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is lay out all the pieces, which I did, um, about where they're going to go. And now I'm going to peel everything that needs to be bonded. So we've got the back panel. I'm going to leave the back of the back panel uh, unpeeled because we don't need to bond anything to it. And then we've got the sides. These match up in length to the sides. And there's four of these pieces. Two are slightly thinner. Those are the inside pieces. Those will be peeled uh, front and back. Then I'm going to peel the uh, inside of the outside panels. One, two. Then I'm going to peel the inside of the bottom panel. Both sides. And then I'm just going to peel the top of the very bottom panel. Okay, this bottom piece will put this aside for now. Uh, is aligned below all of the other pieces. Is that true? Yes. Okay, so this feel like this. So now I'm going to put everything on top of this first panel like this and align it up with the edges. The back panel is slightly wider than everything else. Okay. Sitting right on top and aligned. So I'm going to deal with this side piece. Okay, so this front panel is framed on all the sides by the uh, bottom and two side panels. I'll do a little bit better job of taping them. Okay, then which one goes inside, which one goes outside. Uh, then the two side panels go in, and then inside of there the bottom panel, like this guy. And then you've got the top, which actually needs to be centered like this. I'm gonna, in the release version, I'll cut this back down so it aligns. But in this Okay, I'm going to set this aside and make the lid to align the back portion. So, the lid has two big pieces. The slightly larger piece is the outside. The slightly smaller piece is the inside. We're going to peel the bottom of the lid, both sides of the inside of the lid. And we've got these side pieces. The side pieces, again, there are uh, two that are slightly longer. Those we're going to peel just the inside of. Those are the outer pieces. And then I'm going to peel one side of this uh, front piece on the lid. This top piece is going to become the base and everything is going to sit on top of it. Uh, 
front piece goes inside the side pieces. There we go, like that. This is on the outside, this is on the inside. The bottom piece is below all of the panels. Now we're going to take the two side pieces, the inner side pieces, and slip them in, and then between them, the uh, inner top piece, like that. And that's all ready to be glued up. Um, I'm going to use it as a reference to align the back panel on the paper safe. So this guy goes in like this. aligned the top of the paper safe. Alright, now I'm going to put my gloves on and glue it all together. All right, and there you have the paper safe. Blow some more liquid in here, make sure everything is nice and tight eventually. The top of the paper safe goes on like this, with this little back flange here. Boop. Alright, and then we're going to do the same thing for the inside. This paper safe now lacks a closure. I like to use a magnetic closure. One little magnet inside the paper safe and one uh, outside the lid. I did this one with tape. There's a magnet there and then a magnet. I don't know if you can see, but inside here. I'm going to do this one with glue. You can choose either. These are 2.5 millimeter thick, 10 millimeter in diameter neodymium magnets. You can get them on Amazon. They're real cheap. I like to use some, what's this, 120 grit sandpaper just to rough up the surface that I'm going to bond. Use a tiny drop of cyanoacrylate uh, super glue on the magnet, like that. Uh, this is the gel kind. I do not love the gel kind. I think it causes more crazing and white off-gassing sort of crustiness, but just a little tiny dab like that. And I'm going to put the magnet on the inside of the box in the center. I'm just going to hold it there for a second. All right, and then we got to make sure that this magnet is oriented in the right direction, right? here so I know I gotta sand this bottom side and I'm just gonna put a little drop here Oop, like that and then I'm gonna try and cleanly without getting glue everywhere 
let the magnet tell me ooh, where to align it. All right, here we go. Drop, Oop. glued to my finger, more than magnetism. All right, pushing the box closed, push the magnet here. All right, there we go. That's about all you need to know to build your own Albuquerque box camera. If you'd like to see it in use, check out the video that I made for my artist residency on In an Instant on YouTube. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.